Hi there everyone. Welcome to the video lecture series of double integration. This is the second video lecture on double integration and I am Mayur Gohil. So we will be seeing in this video some examples of double integration where our uh, limits are functions. All right. So let us see how to take up these kind of examples. Uh, first example is evaluate i on uh, on uh, integral 0 to 1 integral x square to x and the function is xy x plus y dy dx. Observe here the limits are functions okay they are not constant numbers the outer integral is having constant number but inside you have functions now whenever you have this kind of integration to be done the procedure is absolutely the same but you cannot change the order the way you did in the constant numbers all right you could write the numbers the way you wanted whenever in our previous video lecture the video lecture number one you had seen the limits were constant numbers their interchange was possible but over here it is not possible all right there are certain theorems and rules are to be followed that we will see in consequent lectures how can we change the order of integration and solve all right right now for time being let us take up this example and solve so consider this integration, all right, the question that has been given to us. First of all, multiply this xy, which is outside the bracket, inside, all right. We first multiply that and then you'd consider a bracket in which the innermost integral and the innermost differential is considered. So that's what we consider. Now we solve this bracket only. Our differential is dy. So we will treat x as constant and we will integrate only y. On integrating y in the first term, you will get y square by 2. And on the second term, when you integrate, you will get y cube by 3. Correct? Plug up the limits that is y equals to x square and y equals to x. The moment you plug up the limits over there, in the first term, what happens? It's y squared becomes x square. The upper limit is x, so it will become x square. And the lower limit is x square, so it will give you minus of x raised to 4. All right. Now, uh, when you plug up the limits over here, you will get y cube as x cube. And when you have plug up the lower limit, you will get you will get minus of x raised to 6. This minus sign is because when you are doing that substitution, our rule says that, right? All right. So now you multiply this x square inside and this x inside. Simplify the function. On simplification of the function, you will get the function reduces to 5 times x raised to 4 upon 6 minus x raised to 6 upon 2 minus x raised to 7 upon 3. What you see over here, your entire function is in terms of x. And this is as simple as doing the single variable definite integration right so you perform the definite integration of this on doing the integration and uh, substituting the limits you will get 1 upon 6 minus 1 upon 14 minus 1 upon 24 simplify this expression you will get i is equals to 3 upon 56 all right so this is the answer for evaluation of this integration okay let us take one more example to have a grip it is i equals to in double integration of square root of a square minus x square minus y square dx dy and the limits are 0 to square root of a square minus y square and 0 to a now observe here the internal limits are for the x variable and the outer limits 0 to a are for y variable all right what i would like to tell you over here is that this question is important because there is certain another way also to solve this so please mark this as important question in your book if you are jotting down this so what we can see this afterwards also how we can solve this all right by another method 
right now we will regularly solve it let us see how to go for it first of all as the standard way we have understood put the bracket to the innermost integral now what you observe is that dx is the differential right so x is the variable we are interested in integrating so we collect the terms which are constant under the function so a square minus y square is constant so i have collected it together and kept it okay now in order to ease out the procedure i have written it as uh, square root of a square minus y square the whole square now why is this written in this manner because i have the formula of integration of square root of a constant square minus the x square right so let us see the recall this formula we have this formula right based upon this formula i have tried to write this way okay now when i see this over here using this formula i will be writing down the expansion of this okay so it is x by 2 times square root of square root of a square minus y square the whole square minus x square plus a square minus y square divided by 2 times sine inverse of x upon whatever is the constant inside it over here okay it is x upon a so constant over here is square root of a square minus y square so that's what has come over here all right so now and the limits are 0 to square root of a square minus y square okay and the dy as it is all right i'll uh, take this step again and write out over here so that we can carry down our simplification in a much easy way okay uh, so over here you have the limits so plug up the limits to the variable x okay these are the variable limits for x so you plug up over here and what you get is for x by 2 you get square root of a square minus y square by 2 over here you don't have to touch you plug up for x okay so you when you give that limit over here that's what you get then again this term remains as it is sine inverse of x upon square root of a square minus y square turns down to be sine inverse of square root of a square minus y square over a square minus y square now what happens when you plug up the limit zero what happens observe it you can do it at the back of your mind also the moment I plug up 0, 0 times anything is going to be 0. So that quantity, the first quantity turns down to be 0. I do not have to bother about it. And even about the second quantity, sine inverse of 0 upon something is, sine inverse of 0 is 0. So that's why I have written 0. Right? So certain, some easy simplifications you can do in your back of the mind and immediately write. Now observe here, what happens to the quantity this big quantity if you see under the square root sign it is the same quantity square subtracted from the same quantity right the so this square root it will become zero and over here you will have a square minus y square divided by two times sine inverse of one all right so that is what you have over here now sine inverse of 1 is pi by 2 that is what we are aware all right so pi by 2 can be taken constant and it can be pulled outside now you integrate this term a square minus y square by 2 from 0 to a with respect to y when you integrate it over here you will get a square y by 2 minus y cube by 6 okay and plug up the limits the moment you plug up the limits you will get pi by 2 times a cube upon 2 minus a cube upon 6 okay and uh, simplify it further you will get pi a cube upon 6 as your final answer okay so your answer is i equal to pi a cube by 6 the only difficulty thing over here was this expansion of this formula that was it and just this complicated looking expressions don't worry they do boil down very uh, easily to a, some small simple expression otherwise it's mathematics you we can handle such things okay so i equal to pi a cube upon 6 is your final answer okay 
let us see one more example okay what we have is i equal to double integration of 2x square y square dx dy and the limits are minus of 2 minus y to 2 minus y and y limits are from 0 to 1 okay so when you do the integration over here firstly you will be putting the innermost integral and the innermost differential in the bracket okay then you perform the uh, integration of the variable under consideration over here x is the variable right so you integrate x square the moment you integrate x square you will get 2x cube upon 3 all right and plug up the limits for x now what happens over here when you plug up the limits observe carefully you will be getting 2 times 2 minus y the whole cube okay because the upper limit is that okay times y square upon 3 minus be careful with the sign so that's why i'm putting the brackets 2 times minus of 2 minus y the whole cube upon 3 times y square now what happens the moment you cube this you this minus sign will remain outside so that minus sign remains and so this minus and this minus sign becomes plus okay which are existing over there so that's why i have written plus okay you simplify this expression the moment you simplify you will get it is same so here you will get 4 upon 3 2 minus y the whole cube times y square okay in order to expand the uh, simplify this you expand uh, 2 minus y the whole cube okay using a minus b the whole cube expansion okay and multiply y square inside and perform the integration the moment you perform the integration here you have 8 times y square so y square integration is y cube upon 3 12 y cube you will have so you will get y raised to 4 upon 4 here you will have 6 y raised to 4 so that's why you have 6 y raised to 5 upon 5 okay and over here it will be y raised to minus of y raised to 5 you will get and so it is y raised to 6 upon 6 and the integration limits are from 0 to 1 the moment you plug up the limits the upper limit is 1 the lower limit when you put everything turns down to 0 so no need okay so what you get is 8 upon 3 minus 12 upon 4 plus 6 upon 5 minus 1 upon 6 okay simplify this you will get 4 upon 3 times 21 upon 30 okay that's 28 upon 30 and so finally you get 14 upon 15 and so final answer on simplification you'll get is i equals to 14 upon 15 as the answer of this integral okay so we have seen three examples in this in which what is most important is that the whenever you have the limits as function you should not change of the order of integration try to perform in the same way okay and uh, solve it very carefully apply limits only to the variable of integration not to the other variable okay and uh, for change of order and further we will see how we can change the order in the further video lectures that are coming okay so till then keep solving good amount of mathematics and if you have any doubt related to the topics that we have discussed in this uh, video lecture you can surely comment in the comment section thank you